Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm in Guadalajara in the state of Jalisco in central Mexico and I'm very excited to be here. The region is famous for tequila, so this is where tequila is made and it's also famous for the mariachi music. So over the next couple of days I'm just going to be exploring this city, hopefully visiting some tequila distilleries and trying the famous tequila. So this centre, the historic centre, is very much characterised by lots of colonial buildings and plazas and it's just a very very pleasant atmosphere to walk around and just you know soak in the chilled out vibes of the city. This is an absolutely gorgeous cathedral here in the historic centre of Guadalajara very much characterised by its two golden spires and it was built over four centuries ago. It was built in the early 1500s and it's a very beautiful Spanish Renaissance style. They have a really, really gorgeous tile work. Reminds me a little bit of like Barcelona and the Gaudi architecture, but it's so beautiful. And you've got a gorgeous, gorgeous dome right in the center. And I love the way in this plaza, there's lots of little stalls selling food and drinks which is great and you know I might get myself something, try something very local and traditional from here. <laughs> this plaza that I'm in now is called Plaza de Armas. It's considered to be you know the most traditional Mexican plaza here in Guadalajara and you've got the cathedral on one side and then you've got this gorgeous government palace on the other side. Again very very beautiful colonial architecture. And then you've got this really cool thing in the middle, which I guess, you know, maybe sometimes mariachi bands play, people just chilling out. It's very, very nice. Very much chilled out Mexican local life, I'd say. Just chilling out on the benches, grabbing a bite to eat. It is so beautiful here. And, you know, being in these plazas, it really does remind me of plazas in Spain and lots of the Spanish pueblos. Most of the architecture around here is from the colonial period when the Spanish obviously were here in Mexico. You have so many local things that you can try here. It's hard to know what to get really or what to try. Well, it's a really, really hot day and one of the things that very typical here in Mexico are aguas frescas, which basically is flavoured water. So there's a place here, there's lots of stalls selling it, and this one has lots of different flavours by the looks of it. Okay, uno por fa. I'm going to get an horchata, which is a sweetened rice milk water. Muchas gracias. Wow, that's big, huh? Mm. It's so refreshing on a hot day. Um, I think it's kind of fragranced with a bit of nutmeg or cinnamon, so it's got that kind of fragrant taste. And of course, sweetened with sugar, no doubt. But very, very nice. So you see a lot of these guys playing the harmony pan, it's called. It's got quite a long history in Mexico, so it's just very nice because, you know, all around the historic center, they're playing this instrument. It's a very nice sound. When I'm not filming videos, I'm often working on admin tasks such as my website. My website was designed using Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. Squarespace are an online website design service and they have a variety of templates to choose from. You can select what you want your website for. So for example, if you want to sell something online or you want to start a travel blog, Squarespace will then show you the templates that they think best fit your website's purpose. They have this amazing website design technology called Fluid Engine, which allows you to do things like drag and drop pictures into your website template, change the color scheme or the font. So it makes it very easy to build your website, even if you have no previous experience making one. I'm really happy with how easy it was to build my professional looking website. 
I went for a very straightforward template with drop down menus along the top to showcase the topics like YouTube videos or Instagram posts. So if you need a website for your passion project or your business, I really recommend checking out Squarespace. It's a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your domain or website, you'll get 10% off using my code Melini Angelica when you visit squarespace.com forward slash Melini Angelica. I have come to the biggest market in Guadalajara. It's the Mercado de Abastos. This is the central market. It's wholesale mostly. This is where trucks come from all around Jalisco, the region. You're really going to have a lot of stuff coming in all day. So I want to go and check out all the fresh produce that they have and try some food, of course. Look at these gorgeous strawberries, lots of berries. They're all being packed here, of course, because, you know, wholesale markets. So and this is where plenty of supermarkets and other restaurants come to buy their fruit and veg. Luego lo vendes a los supermercados, los restaurantes. Plenty of fruit coming from everywhere, abroad and also Jalisco. Gracias. Oh, those things are very typical, those spiky things. ¿Cómo se llaman esto? Guanabana. Oh, that's it, the guanabana. Esto es de acá, de México. Sí. Guanabana. Ah, that's very typical fruit here, guanabana. It's got little spikes in it, looks interesting. Look how many melons there are. Whoa. There is literally a pineapple cave in there. You cannot come to Mexico and not try the avocados here. They are unrivaled, super creamy, of course, guacamole. Very famous Mexican dip. And just look at them. Beautiful, big, green avocados. Absolutely gorgeous. Another thing that I really, really, you know, reminds me of Mexico, the limes. And you can see so many of them here. Because of course, every time you eat something, be it a taco or soup, you'll get a plate of cut up limes, you know, to cut through the spice. And you can just see bags and bags of them. Just look at all these limes. Whoa. It is really great when you come somewhere like this because this really gives you an idea of how rich the land is. And you can understand the culinary, you know, heritage and that richness of Mexico. I, I really, I think it's fantastic to come to a market because you really understand a lot about the culture. Everybody saying hello. <laughs> so this section of the market is basically like the food hall. So you've got lots of little stalls and everybody here is basically having their lunch and you've got all the traditional dishes on offer here. So I'm going to find somewhere to try something very, very typical of the region. Oh, there's so many places to choose from. I don't know where to go. I mean, it's great because you can just sit around the little, you know, stalls and watch the cooking being done. So it's pretty cool. Lots of meat being grilled, tortillas being grilled. Oh, wow. I chose this place and what they do here is they specialize in a very, very traditional dish in the state of Jalisco, which is the birria. Birria is a goat stew and it's cooked with lots of Mexican spices. Very, very popular. Lots of people here eating it. Very much you'll see that kind of fusion here between Mexican ingredients and the influence of the Spanish because they're the ones that, you know, brought over all the livestock. Wow, look at that. Muchas gracias. So this is a very straightforward dish, really. So they give you, of course, always put a bit of extra spice on it. Oh, it's esta. Oh, it's, it's picante. Muy picante. No. Oh, okay. So she told me this one's a good one. So I'll just put, oh. Put a little bit of this sauce on it. I don't want to go too much into it and then it's too spicy. 
cebolla. Y cebolla. Esto pica mucho, esto pica mucho, okay. Right, okay. Got to be I have to be careful because I don't want it to be too spicy. Mira más caldito. Oh wow, that is absolutely fantastic. The richness of the actual soup, the actual liquid is so beautiful. Mmm. Oh my gosh. And the goat meat is so tender and so flavorsome. Never thought it was going to be as tasty as this, honestly. Oh, oh, ¿qué es esto adentro? De gordito. De gordito, gordito. ¿Qué, qué es el animal? Eh, ¿Es res? No. Sí. Sí, es res. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay. Oh, gracias. Okay, he's giving me a taco to try inside. He says there's gordita. Gordita, señora. Look at that. Look at this taco. Una orden. Whoa. Mmm, my god. Mmm, mmm, mmm. ¿Qué toma? Mmm. Delicious. ¿Qué toma? Wow. Mira esto. Esto, esta carne es de res. De res. Oh. So he just gave me a bit of this to try. This is what they call here chivo. Oh my gosh. And that's what goes into the soup. Oh. And that meat is absolutely, I'm not going to lie, it's absolutely stunning. So succulent and so tasty. Wow. What I've realized being in Mexico is that everybody is a obsessed with coca-cola like literally every meal they're drinking coke so i just got myself a coke because why not do as the mexicans do hey mm. oh it's all so tasty it's so good So this is a region of tequila. So as soon as you leave Guadalajara, you are out in the fields and you just have rows and rows of agave. Agave is the plant which makes tequila. And look at it, it's just incredible. It's just a sea of green. All of this countryside is spotted with tequila distilleries where they make it and they show you, you know, they give you a tour and show you the production methods and you get to try it. So I'm gonna to head to one that's very close to here. This is one of the tequila distilleries that you have here called Gava de Oro. So I'm about to do a tour and see how tequila is produced, how it's made, try some of the tequilas that they have here. And it's so beautiful, these distilleries. Honestly, they're like old school haciendas. They're so grand. Tequila is made using just the blue agave. So this is the perfect climate and soil for this kind of uh, agave to grow and flourish. So that's an example of it now. And he's actually cutting the leaves and getting it prepared. And it's only that bit at the end, which is kind of like a, looks like a pineapple. That is what's gonna go and be cooked and processed. Okay, so we are now in the part where they cook the agave after it's been cut and then they're using wood to heat up the water and basically steam the agave and then once that's done, they're putting it in here and you've got this huge, huge volcanic rock which looks very cool that's basically going around and crushing all of the agaves to get that juice out, all of that sweet juice and then all of that's being drained into the middle for the next process which is the fermentation process. Wow. This is where the fermentation of the agave juice happens, underground. So all of the juices are basically coming down the pipes and being poured into the barrels. The fermentation happens naturally. So it's a naturally occurring yeast in the agave juice and doing it this way with the wooden barrels is much more artisanal than the steel ones. So it very much affects the flavors. But yeah, it's just very cool to see it happening. I mean, the only heat they rely on is just the natural heat from the environment, from the sun. Okay, so this is where the distillation happens. So you've got the juices that will be running through the pipes and they will be in these copper containers. Again, the use of copper containers is very artisanal, not steel. 
Um, and then you've got the heating process using the wood, the steam again, and you know that will get the alcohols, the ethanol into these wooden barrels, and then it's mixed with distilled water because it can only be, you can only sell tequila up to 55% of strength. Okay, next stage after distillation. Let's see, wow, this is pretty cool. Loads and loads of barrels. It's very cool down here. Temperature drops a lot. Wow. It's like a little cave with loads of barrels everywhere. Wow. The smell, it's so smoky. Mm. Wow, this looks absolutely incredible. It's like an underground cave with loads of wooden barrels. This is where you have the aging of the extra añejo tequila. So you've got loads and loads of wooden barrels and you know it could be aged for up to five years. And that's what really gives the extra añejo tequila, which I'm gonna try more of the kind of woody, sweet flavors. It's pretty cool, like seeing all this. It reminds me of Charlie the Chocolate Factory, only it's not chocolate, it's alcohol, which is arguably better. Okay, so now for the fun part, I get to try several of the tequilas that they make here. Right, the five plants that exist are Blanco, Joven, Reposado, Añejo, and Extra Añejo. Even though you see this first one transparent, this is not a Blanco. This is a Joven. A Joven tequila is a tequila that is less than two months inside of a barrel, or you grab the white tequila and you mix it with another tequila that was aged. Before you drink this tequila, you have to take oxygen through your nose, you hold your breath, drink the tequila. When the tequila touches your stomach, all of the air exhales slowly through your mouth. We never exhale through our nose because when we exhale through our nose, most of the alcohols go directly to our brain and that's where we get drunk faster. You don't shot it. No. No, good. An example, breathe, pull, drink, and then exhale through your mouth, okay? Simple as that. Wow, okay. What you're gonna do with, you're gonna grab a slice of green apple, and what you're gonna do it, you're gonna bite the tip, maybe half, not that much. Mm -hmm. Chew it for a few seconds, but don't swallow. After those few seconds of chewing, then breathe again through your nose. Hold, drink the rest of the tequila with the apple that you bit, drink it, and then exhale through your mouth. Mm. Very nice. It actually, kind of gets rid of the burning in the, in, the, in the stomach a little bit. So in London, you know, well, when I remember, we used to go clubbing, you used to have tequila and then you used to, I think, lick salt and uh, the, the lemon or the lime. When the Spanish came here to Mexico, in the old days, the natives, they didn't have medicine. They took the shot of tequila and then they got the piece of lime to numb down, to bring down the alcohol flavor down because tequila was already born, but the quality was really bad. I'm not saying it's wrong to do it, but I don't recommend it like an example in bars or restaurant because it's common that the waiters or the same restaurant, they're selling you refill bottles. Mm. If you chew the lime, you're not gonna know if you're actually drinking tequila or sugarcane alcohol that was just adding added colors or something like that. This definitely tastes a lot better than the tequila I used to shot in my university days. <laughs> the last tequila that I'm gonna offer you of Cavadoro is the Extra Añejo. Uh, an extra añejo tequila is considered after three years. It's the last class, so it could be three, four, five, six, seven, or eight years old, something like that. Here in Cava de Oro, we leave it for five years. Añejos and extra añejos pair really good with any dessert. Today, you're gonna be doing it with dark chocolate. This dark chocolate, it's at 70% cacao. It's the correct darkness for the, uh, to balance out the sweetness of this tequila. You can say, like, the most common smells are caramel, vanilla. Yeah, like, I'm almost getting sweets. Ah. I think that's my favorite one. That's definitely much sweeter. Much, much sweeter. Yeah, it's a little more sweeter. Mm, you know, this is really nice. I would actually drink this like after dinner, no joke. I, I would never ever have thought that, ever. The world of tequila is incredibly complex, incredibly scientific, and also very fun, and something that I've really enjoyed exploring. And now I feel like my ideas of tequila have come a long way from back in the days, really. Salud. Salud.
A visit to the tequila region would not be complete, of course, without visiting the Pueblo de Tequila. This is the town of tequila and it is really cute. It's just a really humble, small pueblo characterized by its cathedral in the main plaza and it is just very kind of small town Mexico life, which is just really just nice to experience. You know, very different to Guadalajara, which is a big city with lots of people. Oh my God, it's so nice around here, honestly. What a nice town. All old school tequila buildings, cantinas. Look how old school this looks. Well, if you wanted to get drunk on tequila, then tequila, the town, is the perfect place to come because it's lined with all these little makeshift bars with lots of tequila on offer. It's great, really, isn't it? Oh, you've got so many booze trucks here. Everybody's pretty drunk on tequila on those buses. This is a little market, the Mercado, here in the Pueblo de Tequila. They sell lots of food. So you've got a lot of stalls that are doing traditional food. See what takes my fancy. Okay, so I have gone for what's called barbacoa tacos, which is something I've really wanted to try since coming here. Barbacoa, it's like a meat beef and it's really nicely kind of cooked very, very slowly for a long amount of time. So it becomes incredibly tender, it's like shredded pieces of meat. Put some onions on the top, a little bit of coriander. Give it that kind of freshness. Oh, is it picante? Name. Picante. Gracias. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really tender meat and so juicy and flavorsome. First time of trying barbacoa, this style of taco, and it is just like, wow, does not disappoint at all. That might be my favorite style of taco. Así se ve más bueno, eh. Levanta un poquito más la cara. Eso. Que se vea que venimos llegando a los cantaritos. Pásale por favor. So you're going to get lots of places like this in the Tequila region and they're basically all selling what you call cantaritos, which is a very traditional cocktail here in the Jalisco region with tequila, grapefruit, soda, lime juice. So I'm going to try it because you've got to try cantaritos when you come here. today so they're in a very good mood I guess that's what tequila does to you isn't it Cheers. Salud. I've had an awesome time exploring the tequila region and I can see why you know it's so famous and you have to come here because you know it's all about tequila there's a lot of heritage here people take a lot of pride in it and at the end of the day it's an alcohol which makes you very very happy I've had 
an absolutely fantastic time in Guadalajara and one of the last things I wanted to do was catch a mariachi show here in the historic center. So I'm at the Plaza de Mariachis and there's lots of them singing. It's absolutely incredible. This is where the mariachi music was born. So it's just super cultural to actually see it live. La cara bonita, bonita, bonita. Los ojos grandes, la boca chiquita, te quiero y me quieres. Y no sé por qué, será porque tú. Oh. 